Um, so over the last uh, week or so, I guess I've rethought my ideas on curriculum and policy. Um, after Amy and I uh, argued semantics of the definition of policy, I think I realized that my view was a little narrow on what policy really, uh, what policy stands for. Um, and I guess over the last week, what has happened is that my ideas on what creates a curriculum have become narrower. Well, what is policy has become much, much more broad, um, especially from Patrick Jones's reading of hard and soft uh, policy documents or, or hard and soft policy. Um, so I guess for curriculum, a lot of the things that I would have considered curriculum before, such as like the Ontario uh, curriculum documents, I would have considered that a curriculum document, uh, but looking through it, it's, uh, it's not one or the other. Uh, reading through that document, the opening 100 pages or so encompasses, I guess, what we would consider policy because they're the outlines, they're the goals, they're the rules. Um, meanwhile, the, the following parts uh, seem to be the more content-based. And I think that could be where I'm starting to divide the line. Uh, I'm still slightly confused in some ways because um, before I would have considered that NISMA manual a curriculum document, and now I think I see it more as a policy document. Um, so now I'm thinking curriculum would be anything content-based, uh, such as we saw in the TED Talk from earlier this week, or uh, anything that actually is taught in the class. And I think this also has to... Do, I still think it encompasses things such as the hidden curriculum, uh, the way to interact with one another, things that are actually being taught in the class or that the children are actually learning and now just considering the curriculum. Um, now, and I'm incorporating the, anything that is uh, goal-oriented, ideologically based, is is a policy. Um, and I realize that that now has uh, is much more broad than I originally thought it was when I thought policy was uh, directed only to the the choices and the rules made up by the higher ups of education. Um, so yeah, looking through that uh, the curriculum document, I guess was like my other uh, reading and what I realized a lot of the things that they say at the beginning of it are directly related to curriculum and not or uh, policy not curriculum because it outlines how to like to overview the program and your expectations and uh, things like the creative process and the critical analysis so it's showing you where their um, where their priorities lie and what they would like and through their policy what they would like you to teach and then later on when it says the strands and the uh, like 8.1 teach this skill I think now that becomes a curriculum document so it's interesting to see that this document which is they even label the arts the Ontario arts curriculum is also a policy document um, and it's funny on their website as well they label curriculum documents and policy documents and there's two separate things but each of their curriculum documents does entail their policy as well so it's in that sense the Ontario curriculum is not is very closely attached to its policy um, interesting and I love that policy section is I think one of the most skimmed over parts in their curriculum documents uh, especially for new teachers um, so yeah to sum up I think that my my curriculum my ideas of what defines a curriculum have gotten more narrow to what we're actually seeing in a classroom. And then the ideas of policy are much more broad. They're much more um, vague sometimes, I think. Um, and I think it can be hard to sometimes differentiate what is a curriculum document and what is a policy document. And my definition right now, is it a direct content-based goal or is it an ideological goal or a way or a rule or an idea? And I think I'm going to classify that as policy at this point.